to Tactical Talk, this is Zan Khan. Today the topic of our show is, will Catalonia secede in the near future? Today the guest of our show is Alphonse Lopez Tena. He's a politician and author and also a public intellectual. He is the former deputy of the Parliament of Catalonia and he's also the former member uh, of Spain's Council of the Judiciary. We will be discussing if Catalonia will gradually separate from Spain. Welcome to our show, Alphonse Lopez Tana. This is Zan Khan. It's a pleasure to have you on Tactical Talk. Thanks very much, Hein. Alphonse Lopez Tana, let's get to the first question. What are the arguments of the people who want independence? Uh, well, as you know, it's a parallel path taken by Scotland, Catalonia, and Flanders inside the countries that are members of the European Union from a lot of time ago, but moreover in the last 10 years, more or less. That is, since there is a political union in the, in the European Union, an economical and, and, and single market in the, in the European Union, is to try to get the, all the powers that uh, an independent state gives a country instead of being submitted or under another country that rules you. So since it's uh, easier and because there's a stability given by the uh, single market inside the European Union that has, uh, that has empowered these countries to, uh, to make a push for independence in the last years. Uh, let's get to the second question. What are the arguments of the unionists, the people who want to stay together with Spain? The arguments of the uh, unionists in all these countries, also in Belgium, in United Kingdom, in the Kingdom of Spain, are always more or less the same. Uh, first is stronger together, better together, uh, telling that uh, it's better to be part of a, of a bigger state, of a bigger country, like Belgium, like United Kingdom, not so bigger in the case of Belgium, but bigger than Flanders in any way and uh, the United Kingdom or the Kingdom of Spain, that being alone, that going alone. Second is uh, a question of a matter of sentiment, a matter of feeling. They feel part of the, of the, of the Scottish people, of the Catalan people, of the, Fle uh, the Flemish people, feel themselves as being Spanish as well, or being British, or being uh, Belgians. So they don't see the point of separation, of secession, since they feel well as part of a country that they uh, feel their own. Uh, you know, all these countries that are part of the population that feel themselves that they are a different people, they are a different country. So uh, independence or autonomy or self-government has a sense. And another part, more bigger or lesser, part of the country that of people of this uh, country that feel themselves as just a region just a part of a of another of a bigger country like it would be uh, the britain or uh, spain or or belgium so that's the second argument they don't see the point of independence of, at all since they feel themselves as a part of this other country and Third is uh, third. It's more open all the risks, uncertainties, all the liabilities, all the well. We know how things are going on like this. We are, have been part of Spain or part of the United Kingdom or part of Belgium from uh, a century to century, three centuries old. So, what's the point of changing that? What's the point of going? an adventure that you, you, you never know if it's going to, to go well or bad. You, you never know if it, it's going to succeed or fail. So that's the third kind of arguments that you need to give that is not different from the, from the arguments that all in other situations in other countries that go to, or achieve independence in the past, you need there uh, said. Better to be in the British Empire, that's stability, that's, uh, that's powerful, that's, uh, that's, it's better to be here, we know how it, it's better to improve our lot inside the British Empire than not to go outside 
and begin um, a sailing that we don't know where we are going to. I'm talking about India or Emirates or all the African countries that were part of the British Empire not so much ago, 50 years ago, 70 years ago. Uh, let's get to the uh, third question. You've written many articles on this subject. Uh, in your opinion, do you think the majority of people of Catalonia uh, want to stay with Spain or do you think they want independence? In my opinion, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not only an intellectual in these matters, I also work a lot on this and I, I have a political active, uh, actively political on this matter uh, and other matters as well. Well, in the case of Catalonia, it's, 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 it's a complex matter. I mean, I think that moreover, more or less, 50%, uh, the people of Catalonia is divided more or less at 50%. 50% are against independence. It depends on the, on the polls, it depends. In fact, uh, the peak of, of pro-independence was achieved uh, in 2013, and it was around 49%. Now it's uh, 30, 35% only. And the other 50%, but it depends on the years, depends on different circumstances, are for. But my guess is that people in Catalonia that say that they are for independence, they don't really want independence, they just wish independence. It's more a desire than a matter of, uh, of wanting it really. I mean, it's not easy to get independence, uh, especially when the country you belong to is strongly against it. That is the case of Spain. And uh, you need a lot of, uh, of activity, you need a, a mindset to get independence that I, I, I feel, I think, that uh, Catalans that say that are for independence utterly lack of. They don't really want, they just wish independence, they wish to um, feel themselves that it would be better to be independent, but they are not willing to do what it takes to get independence. That's the reason that they uh, Catalonian independence movement has stalled. That's the reason that it, no go, it doesn't go forward, and that's the reason that uh, it's not going to be achieved. More than the, the other part, around 40, 50 percent of the population are against. Uh, Alphonse Lopez Tena, why do you think it's still a far-fetched uh, idea that they would be achieving independence in the near future? Well, because. I more or less explained it already because there is not a real willingness to get independence. In 2000, and, and, and you, you may see what has happened in these last years. In 2012, the main Catalan parties that uh, won the elections and formed government said we are going to have a referendum on independence in two years' time, regardless of what the Spanish government says. I mean, it's better to uh, to have an agreement, as Scotland has in that time, with the British government to uh, have a, a, an independence, a referendum about independence that is accorded, that is uh, to the two parts: central government, British or Spanish government, and the uh, and the Scottish or Catalan government uh, establish jointly was the terms and conditions of that referendum. But anyway they said, we are going to do it regardless of what the Spanish government says. Well, in two years' time, they um, approve a bill in the parliament to uh, have this referendum. They signed, the president signed a decree uh, establishing the date of the referendum. And in that case, the Constitutional Court of Spain forbid it. And they, well, just walked away. They stepped back. From that moment on, it has going down. Now, they say again, we are going to have a referendum, in that case, it's in 1st of October, next 1st of October 1st, uh, regardless of what the Spanish government says. And nobody believes it. Only the, only the diehards, pro-government minions of pro-Catalan government minions uh, believe that. Nobody believes that. So everybody knows that, that this referendum is not going to be held 
that uh, if you see the stock exchange, if you see all the economical e economical indicators, you will see the indexes, the mm, risk of 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 interest. You see that. Uh, well, do you feel from there that in just a month and a half, a country like Spain that forms part of the European Union that is the third, fourth GDP bigger European Union country, uh, a main part of the euro currency, is going to lose, without any agreement, is going to lose a country that is 20% uh, of its GDP, that is 24% of its exports, if it was, um, if everybody believed that, in the rational, I mean, uh, markets, or the international uh, governments, um, it will be a very, very huge crisis inside the European Union at the same time as Brexit and uh, in the world as at large. But you see that nobody moves. Yeah, nobody moves because nobody believes that. They all think that um, the Catalan parties and the Catalan government and the Catalan people will do now the same that they did in 2014 that is to protest to say that well that's uh, contrary to democracy not to allow people to vote but mm, no more than that no more than protests maybe a little bit of violence now maybe but no more than that so independence is not on the agenda and i think that is going to begin to go down in fact I told you before, uh, the polls it had a peak of 49% uh, in 2013 and it's lower than 35% now because it's impossible to maintain attention on a political um, objective like independence for so, ma so many years without any achievement and without any perspective of any achievement. Okay, last question. Uh, do you think it's economically viable for places to achieve independence uh, from countries they're a part of? Well, yes, it is. Uh, you may see in the world there are nowadays 200 independent countries. There were only 60 independent countries uh, 70 years ago. Now there are uh, three or four more than that. There are 200. <clears throat> and uh, it depends on globalization. I mean, if you are a country that um, has a free access to the other countries with the GATT, uh, OMC um, agreements inside the European Union or inside the, all the other trade, uh, trade deals that there are uh, on the world, you can um, freely export to other countries. So you are economically viable. You may see that Scotland has 5 million people, Catalonia has 7.5 million people, Flanders, I, I'm not very sure nowadays, but I think that it's more 6 or 7 million people, that is higher, and GDP is higher than all, a lot of independent countries worldwide, in the same Europe or in, the, uh, or in Africa or in Asia or, uh, or America. Um, you don't ask if there is uh, is viable uh, the independence, economical viable the independence of Laos or the independence of the of Kuwait or the independence of Yemen, so um, or the independence of all the stands in Central Asia. M more or less, all countries when they achieve independence, they go through and they live. They are countries that go well. They are countries that go bad and they are countries that quote horribly bad but in any case they won't they won't never go back there are no countries that say well since independence is not a good thing to have let's go back to be governed by the former by our former master even in those cases that is evident that independence doesn't work like Somalia or like Haiti or like the only other failed states or that suffer under horrible dictatorships at Zimbabwe. But they don't say, well, let's, let's call the British to go back here to govern us. They don't say that. 
Thank you so much, Alphonse Lopez Tena, for being on Tactical Talk. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you, Shaheen. This was Alphonse Lopez Tena, a politician, author, and also public intellectual. We were discussing will Catalonia secede in the near future. Until the next episode of Tactical Talk, this is Zan Khan. Take care and goodbye.